Fans, boxing fans are crazy. Well, they're all crazy. All people are crazy. But boxing fans, maybe a little bit more sometimes. Some maybe because I'm around them and I see and I noticed and whatever. But they, uh, and you know what? I don't blame them. Yeah, that's right. I said that. I don't blame them. I'll tell you where I don't blame them because what I touched on earlier. They're so cynical. They, they. If you, you, you know what? If you told them the. If you told them the sun was up, they go to the table. If you were to the to the window to see. If you're if you were a boxing promoter, somebody telling them because they have been lied to so many times and disappointed so many times, where they thought they were going to get what they wanted and they didn't get it. And if they did, it was five years too late. And and so now, if you tell them something, they're ready for what's going to go wrong. They're, they're already, the, they're the Jets, the New York Jets fans, where every year it's going to be their year, Ken. I live around them. My son has friends, Mark Darrow and Anthony D'Angelo, all my, my son Teddy's friends. And they're, they're diehard Jet fans for, for life. And every year, this is our year. We got Aaron Rodgers. This is our year. This is going to be our second play of the game. Of the first game, Aaron Rodgers goes down and, and tears his Achilles out for the year and the jet fan every year now it's gonna they're, they're excited they're exuberant all of that and then they're waiting for oh but something's gonna happen something's gonna happen because it happens and it does so that's how the boxing fan so when this fight got postponed for a cut as clear as day he got cut with an elbow it happens it happens a lot. It happens where in sparring, he got you get cut sometimes. And was it a very? It looked like it was a pretty, a pretty motivated, if you will, contested sparring session two weeks before. But listen, I've been there too, so I'm not knocking anyone. But he had a headgear on. He's sparring. He gets hit an elbow. The fans immediately up. He did that to get out. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> yeah, but that's where that's I so say I, you are out of your mind. And and the yeah. sport put you out of your mind. The sport that's made right. you nuts. The With all the stuff that I just described, with being disappointed, lied to so many times that, that now it's like, okay, yeah, I knew it. Because that's what the fans are saying. <laughs> I knew it. We knew what? I You're knew the fight wasn't going to happen. I knew someone's going to. I knew somebody was going to find a way to get out. I knew it wasn't going to happen. I knew it was all set up. What do you mean it's set up? What are you talking about? The guy got hit and out. Ah! He hit himself with the elbow. Uh, uh, no, he didn't. Oh, uh, he paid the guy to hit him with an elbow. Oh, uh, really? I mean, <laughs> the guy must have been a freaking elbow wizard to hit him that cleanly and that like right between the headgear. But I mean, it happens. On. The headgear moves. It happens. But look, it happens by accident. I'm saying you couldn't do oh, that on no, purpose you're right. if you tried. Listen, Ken, I, we saw the film. We saw the video of it. it. It was a vicious punch. It did look like the elbow was up. It did make me. I'd throw the guy out of camp if, he, if I saw him throw that. I'd say, <laughs> I can't take a chance. I can't take a That's chance. You're throwing a, you're throwing a hook with an elbow coming through. You know, like. Like boom! I, yeah. I can't have you. I can't have you in here with my guy. Where you could you could blow a uh, this kind of fight. But anyway, the guy. The reason he got hit. Here's an interesting thing for you, Ken. We just did a fight plan, which now is going to take a little longer for the people to see it. But we just finished in Manhattan doing a fight plan for Fury, and and for for um, music. Uh, for the fight and it's a good one people are gonna like it i hope you love it i hope you like it and um we also did one for nganyu and joshua that that one you're gonna see on time hopefully if something crazy don't happen to postpone that fight but when we did the fight plan i talked about different ways each guy can win the fight and one of the things that i talked about uh ken if you remember was that, yeah, everyone thinks Fury's the bigger guy. He is much bigger. He's a giant. He's, you know, he's going to be the guy on the outside. He's longer. He's bigger. You know, uh, 
uh, I mean, who's, he's going to be the guy on the inside. He's going to be the guy coming forward. Well, he can do whatever he wants because Fury is very versatile. He's very athletic as a Zuzik, but very athletic for a big man. <laughs> and he can move. He can box, which he used to do early in his career. And then later on, he started coming forward in spots <laughs> where he could be more aggressive and, and use his weight to come forward, to weigh you down. He can, he, he's got a... He's got options because of his athleticism. There's no doubts about it. But most people would probably figure, okay, he's close to 300 pounds, 280 pounds, six foot eight, six foot seven, whatever it is. He's going to wear this guy down. He's going to be too big for him. He's going to come inside. He's going to lean on him. He's going to, you know, he's going to tire him out up on the inside. He, he's going to bring that weight uh, towards Usyk. And Usyk to win, he's going to have to box. He's going to have to box a really exceptional fight, which he's very capable of, where he's going to, like he did with Joshua, where he's in and out, he uses his great legs, he, his great defense, he makes you miss, he pops you, he moves to his sides, you know, he counters, he gets off first, uh, he uses his speed, his combinations. That's what he has to do. But I remember making a point, and I want to bring it out now, where I thought that it would kind of surprise people. After studying both guys and getting ready to do the fight plan, I saw where I believe Usa can be very effective inside with the bigger man. Because for the most part, I was watching where Tyson Fury's been a self-taught fighter for, he's been around for a long time, and he's done great things, and I love him for a lot of reasons. He's made the sport more interesting. He's he's helped people make money in the sport. Yeah, I know people are against him sometimes and who he's fought and he, you know, picking a spot. I get it. But his promotional abilities, you know, since Muhammad Ali, nobody's had those kind of promotional abilities that Tyson Fury has to bring attention to the sport, to make the sport better in those ways. I know people call him a duck and all that stuff. I don't know how many times have those people. I just gotta say one one thing about one thing about saying the guy's a duck. He's gonna get the biggest payday of his life. He's fighting like someone who doesn't punch like a Wilder and and some of the other people he's been in with. To think that he would be afraid or duck this oh, biggest fight of his life to unify all the time. Titles. You couldn't possibly be this level of a fighter if you were worried about ducking out of a fight well, of with someone who is moving up from cruiserweight, has everything that you want. That's the cra of all the crazy theories out there that he's ducking this seems preposterous. The, yeah, I, and look, <laughs> those people saying it. How many times you've been in a ring? <laughs> anyway, I get I I get away from that. Okay, now. And it's your right to say it. You're a fan. It's your right to say it. I get it. But he, when I was breaking the film down to get ready to put out there for the fans and, and whoever wants to go to my bookie or not go to my bookie, but just have an idea of what to look for that maybe, maybe it's something you didn't think about. One of those things I saw as a trainer I would look to exploit the bigger man in his territory, his so-called turf, on the inside. I'd go into the lion's den with the bigger guy in spots, in smarts. You got to do it right. You got to do it smart. But I saw opportunities where, and, and the point I was starting to say to set this up was that for the most part, Fury's a self-taught guy. He's, he's got a good trainer now, uh, Emmanuel Stewart's uh, nephew, uh, the nephew of the great, great, great uh, Emmanuel Stewart, who, who is not with us anymore, but a great trainer. Um, so he's Sugar Hill. He's got a really good trainer. He's had other good trainers. Davidson, uh, he's, you know, who's doing a good job with fighters now, doing a good job with Joshua, Ben Davidson. You know, he came out of nowhere, but he's doing a really, you got to give him credit. I give him credit. He's doing a good job. But aside from that, Tyson Fury been around where, you know, he, he was never formally taught by any specific top trainers until maybe the last few years. So this is a guy who is still, as good as he is, 
he's still undeveloped in certain areas. Now, maybe part of it is he never really had to be an inside fighter being as good as he is. Here's the point. I looked at film really close. He doesn't know how to fight on the inside that well. He really don't. Like he'll grab you, he'll throw the uppercut, he'll do that. But as far as any sustained <laughs> combat on the inside, <laughs> he doesn't really put together defense and offense. He does, he's not really comfortable. He's not really good at fighting on the inside. I can write, I, that's the plainest, the best way I should say it and could say it. And Usyk is. I think Usyk could take advantage on the inside, even though a lot of people say, oh, no, no, he better not be inside with the bigger guy. It'll be a mistake. I think if he does it right, he can have moments on the inside where Tyson Fury leaves himself open, where he he really, truly gives you opportunities to catch some clean shots a, because he, he's not really versed in what to do on the inside. And B, he's, he's not looking to work, so he looks to grab. And when he looks to grab, he exposes himself. He'll go and he'll look to grab. And if you know what to do in that moment, rather than stand there and get grabbed, you have an, an opportunity to exploit something there, to really do. And I saw it in the clip. It's funny. We did it on a fight plan. People, when it comes out, you're going to look and see it. But on that clip in sparring, Ken, I, it spoke to what I was talking about. Like, I got verification of it, where he was holding, they were on the inside, Fury was holding on to his spawn partner with his left hand, holding him in, and then he was going to throw a right uppercut. But when he threw the right uppercut, what do I always talk about, Ken? Never give up defense for offense. He did. He dropped his hand to throw. He's a big guy. So, you know, but instead of dipping his shoulder, he dropped his right, because he hasn't been taught that for the most part. He dropped his right hand to throw it, and he left himself wide open for a counter left hook and, of course, a counter elbow that, that you know, did what it did. But it, it again, a affirmation to me that, hey, yeah, he's got these flaws on the inside where Usyk can take advantage of that. So that, to finish up with the postponement part, where the people that, you know, said he did it to himself and it was, uh, you know, it was conspired to do this, of course that's nuts. But I get it. I You got the right to be nuts when... You've been through all the mills of things that you fans have been through where every time you're told something, it doesn't happen. So I, I <laughs> and the fans actually will, they kind of, they might be responsible for this in a way, Ken. Because they might have, they might have made it happen by their thoughts that, oh yeah, something's going to happen. You know what I mean? They might have put out the so many brave la brain lengths or brave waves of, what what's that old saying, Ken? Where you wish something <laughs> into happening, yeah. or you you uh not wish something, but where where you kind will, of will yeah you, you will, will something. They might have willed <laughs> something to happen by because every one of them was saying, oh, that's not gonna happen. You know how many people came up to me uh, a few weeks ago? Oh yeah, that fight ain't gonna happen, or a week ago, whatever it was before the. <laughs> yeah, I said no, no, it's gonna happen. <laughs> not in your business. Not in your business. Eh, something to happen. <laughs> something to happen. It ain't gonna happen.